Hey guys, how you doing? Hey, uh, this is a interesting article. It says the replica of the Temple Baal will be uh, erected in New York and London. Um, don't know if it's true, but looks like it is. Uh, here's more on the article. Replica of the Temple of Baal will be erected in New York and London. Next month, the Temple of Baal will come to Times Square. Reproductions of the 50-foot arch that form the temple's entrance are to be installed in New York and in London, a tribute to the 2,000-year-old structure that the Islamic State destroyed last year in the Syrian town of Palmyra. The groups rampage through Palmyra, a city that reached its peak in the 2nd and 3rd century AD, enraged the world, spurring scholars and conservationists into action. Numerous non-governmental organizations are now cataloging and mapping damaged cultural heritage sites in the region. It will be uncanny and thrilling to see this arch from an ancient desert civilization set against the bright lights of New York. Unfortunately, facsimiles can achieve only so much. Denuded of people, stripped of the rich social contexts in which they were once embedded, antiquities appear just as evidence of the grandeur of the past the accomplishments of another place in another time. But what did these assemblages of stone mean to the modern Iraqis and Syrians who lived with them? For Salam al a Syrian archaeologist who works at the University of Pennsylvania Museum, the loss of the Temple of Baal was deeply personal. I have a special love for Palmyra because the Temple of Baal is where my mother was born, she said. Miss Kunter's grandfather was a policeman in Palmyra when its Roman era ruins were inhabited. Well into the 20th century, generations of Palmyans made their homes in the shade of millennium's old columns. The locals taught Miss Kunter's grandmother, who was a young bride when she arrived in Palmyra, how to cook and how to bake bread. Her daughter was among the last generation born inside the ancient city. In the late 1920s and early 1930s, French colonial authorities cleared the area of its inhabitants and dismantled their mud brick house. That paved the way for the archaeological exploration and preservation of the site, but it also definitively ended ancient Palmyra's habitation as well as the use of the Temple of Baal, which over the centuries had transformed into a Byzantine church, then a mosque before eventually becoming part of the village where Miss Kunter's mother was born. When lamenting the masonry and sculpture destroyed by the Islamic State, we can easily overlook this shifting human story. We too readily consign antiquities to the remote province of the past. But they can remain meaningful in surprising and ordinary ways. This is the meaning of heritage, Miss Kunter said. It's not only architecture or artifacts that represent history, it's these memories and the ancestral connection to place. Bulldozed by the Islamic State in 2015, the 1,500-year-old Monastery of St. Ilian, near al Qariatain, Syria, was a symbol of these connections. It was a modest and unadorned structure that had none of the glamour of the Temple of Baal, a 3D reconstruction of the rather plain sarcophagus that held the remains of its eponymous scent won't be coming to a major western city anytime soon. But its importance lay in its role as a bridge between communities. al Qariatain is a small town in the desert between Palmyra and Damascus. For centuries, Christian and Muslim pilgrims alike came to the monastery to seek the blessings of the saint. Muslims venerated Saint Ilian as a Sufi sheikh, known to them as Sheikh Ahmed the priest. His tomb was draped in the green satin common to Sufi holy sites. In attacking the monastery, the Islamic State was not simply leveling a holy place. The militants struck at a site that had knit Muslim and Christian communities together for centuries. Local legend has it that centuries ago, the townspeople decided that no matter whether Islam or Christianity gathered more believers, the group in the majority would always protect the one in the minority. Generations of pilgrims left affectionate graffiti on the sarcophagus of Marillion, including a Star of David suggesting that at least one Jew visited the saint. Another instance of revealing graffiti can be found on an antiquity destroyed last year in northern Iraq. 
After the Islamic State seized Mosul in 2014, important archaeological sites fell into the group's hands. These included the ancient Assyrian city of Nineveh, which the Islamic State pillaged in 2015. One of the antiquities demolished at Nineveh was an enormous figure of Allah Masu, a winged bull with the torso of a man and the beard of a king. It was a protective deity that watched over the Nergal Gate, a major entrance into the city. The Lamassu was probably installed during the reign of King Sennacherib, who ruled from 705 to 681 BC. He was an expansionist leader under whom Nineveh became the capital of the Assyrian Empire. The muscular iconography of the Lamassu matched Sennacherib's imperial ambition. Before smashing the sculpture, Islamic State fighters chiseled off its face with a pneumatic drill. The winged bull carried the history not only of kings, but also of ordinary people. In Matthew 12 27, Jesus calls Satan Beelzebub, linking the devil to Baalzebub, a Philistine deity, 2 Kings 1 2. The Balim of the Old Testament were nothing more than demons masquerading as gods, and all idolatry is ultimately devil worship, 1 Corinthians 10:20. Before the Hebrews entered the Promised Land, the Lord God warned against worshipping Canaan's gods, Deuteronomy 6 14 15, but Israel turned to idolatry anyway. During the reign of Ahab and Jezebel, at the height of Baal worship in Israel, God directly confronted the paganism through his prophet Elijah. First, God showed that he, not Baal, controlled the rain by sending a drought lasting three and one half years, 1 Kings 17 to 1. Then Elijah called for a showdown on Mount Carmel to prove once and for all who the true God was. All day long, 450 prophets of Baal called on their God to send fire from heaven, surely an easy task for a God associated with lightning bolts, but there was no response, no one answered, no one paid attention. 1 Kings 18:29. After Baal's prophets gave up, Elijah prayed a simple prayer, and God answered immediately with fire from heaven. The evidence was overwhelming, and the people fell prostrate and cried, The Lord he is God. The Lord he is God. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. You can visit us on www.therealthingmeme.webs.com.